In previous episode I mentioned that we didn't make it exactly point by point of the original Route de Grands Alpes. Yeah, we didn't pass. You see a blue line on the map pointing the original Route de Grands Alpes and the red one, i.e. traveled by the three of us. The map shows very well our deviations from the main trail, some shortcuts and one mistake at the beginning of the route, where we missed the Col de Turini, but we drove through more bends and passes, Col de Braus, Col de Lable, Col de Lorme, Col saint Roche, and Col de Porte. Looking at the map, our variant was running through a more interesting scenic area. What's more, we didn't get through it through the Col de la Bonnette, which lies outside the Brigier, which, however, is worth visiting due to its wonderful views overlooking the highest point in Europe asphalt section of the road around the Bonnet Peak. This requires leaving the main road and then returning to it trail. And in total you need to cover about 70 kilometers of driving in demanding mountain terrain with numerous bends, serpentines and as it happens in the mountains with capricious weather. However, the next time I'm on a motorcycle in this part of France, I will definitely make up for this travel delay. We also didn't reach the very end of the Route de Grandes Alpes because the weather is getting worse. Uh, it's deteriorated, and we've decided that we are escaping to the south of the Alps, to Italy, to the Aosta Valley. Hoping for heavy rain and an Atlantic low, they won't make it through the Alps, and they will not come to Italy. A few words about this event and the visit near the summit of Mont Blanc, you will find in one of the next episodes. We go further, along connected routes again, some of it mine and some of it original. We can see now, driving through the Cotian Alps, that the vegetation is getting smaller and a bit more sparse. This is the result of climbing to an altitude of 1,500 meters above sea level. Here, the pines are lower, more spreading, and on exposed parts of the slopes the trees are replaced by various bushes and even mountain pine. The Cotian Alps have as many as 58 peaks to a height of over 3,000 meters above sea level. We won't go that high today, but beyond the beautiful canyon of the Ubai River, we will be accompanied by the first mountains of the High Alps. And since we are already at the River Canyon, the Alps are young, folded mountains formed during the Alpine orogeny, something like 50 million years ago, were glaciated along with the entire the northern part of the European continent. And then, during the interglacials, huge masses melting water flowed from glaciers, together with rocky stone material from the Alps, as a result of which they were created beautiful and deep valleys, and even in some of the harder rocks, beautiful canyons. Well, we are going through one of such canyons now. It is a canyon of some side tributary of the Ubai River, wonderfully hollowed out with steep walls above the road, secured in many places with metal mesh, protecting passing vehicles against rockfalls from weathered, eroded in a large part of the walls. Col du Vars, we are passing lies on the border of two administrative regions of France. To the south, it is bordered by the Provence Alpes Côte d'Azur region, and to the north, Auvergne Rhône Alps. For us, this is the end of the adventure, with the holiday atmosphere of the Maritime Alps and the beginning of the real Alps. Such Alps, where the vegetation will be poor, strong, and cold winds, and an additional sweatshirt or lining under the motorcycle jacket, will become our standard in the coming days.
Thanks to the fact that we went higher than the Maritime Alps, we have better and better views of the mountain ranges we pass. There won't be so many trees here effectively blocking the view of the mountains, so we can enjoy riding motorcycles with beautiful, truly mountain views. I know, I know. In Poland, you can also find something a bit mountainous for the eye. Of course, we have all the mountains available for motorcycles. The passes lie below the mountain pine line, so the trees growing on the roadsides effectively prevent you from enjoying the views of the mountains. Here in the Alps, this problem disappears with altitude. Moreover, the size of the Alps in relation to all our combined mountains. Beskids, together with the Pienini Mountains, the Tatra Mountains, the Sudates, and the Biestadi Mountains. This is a Hudge area gap. The entire Alps cover an area of approximately 220,000 kilometer. And Polish mountains in total are only or as much as 16,000 kilometer Q. That is, barely 7% of the Alps. That's why we decided to go to these mountains on motorcycles, to see and admire their beauty, their vastness, and majesty. Unfortunately, all good things come to an end. That's what happened this time, too. Our journey came to an end for the day, and we went to the campsite under the Col des Oirs. The campsite staff informed us that there will be a concert in the evening, and we decided to attend. We parked our machines on the asphalt road running the entire length of the campsite. We pitched tents, took a bath, ate pasta again with canned meat and some sauce. We then grabbed chairs and shuffled off to the concert. The concert was to take place in a tent and this is a non-smoking place. We organized a table and we sat outside, warmly dressed. To stay warm, we enjoyed all three types of wine from the bar, and we participated in the concert through the wall. After tasting all three types of wines, we decided to continue the concert with our favorite, pink. Another, and another, and probably another. We tasted two or even three. Anyway, I managed, despite my complete lack of knowledge of the French language and not very good knowledge of English among French people, establish a strong bond with the locals and get into the French national game of boule. So I threw big balls at other big balls, drank some wine, and then, with a slightly unsteady step, due to fatigue, of course, checking the left and right edge of the road, I went to my tent. That evening, or rather night, Piotr accompanied me bravely and even decided to extend the return journey a bit to sleep, checking even more often than I do to see if any danger awaits us on both sides of the road to the tents. We climbed, tired of the strangely long way back to tents, and we all fell asleep like a... boozers. <laughs> 